welcome every one of you those of you who are joining us uh, you were not with us yesterday uh, we welcome you um, in the name of Jesus something good is going to happen to you this is the year of holding fast Revelation chapter 2 and verse 25 the words of our master he says hold fast what you have till I come don't lose your faith don't lose your hope don't lose what you have believed hold on to it Jesus is saying because we are in the days of the falling away from the faith and in these days we must be vigilant to keep that which God has given to us and yesterday we started talking about holding what holding fast your obedience tell your neighbor hold fast your obedience now we we want to go to the word of God Where we were yesterday, uh, we're going to read uh, 1 Samuel chapter, four, chapter 15, verse 14. Samuel said, what then is this bleating of the sheep in my ears and the lowering of the oxen which I hear? And so said, they have brought them from the Amalekites for the people spared the best of the sheep and oxen to sacrifice to the Lord your God and the rest we have utterly destroyed then Samuel said to him be quiet and I will tell you what the Lord said to me last night and he said to him to him speak on so Samuel said when you were little in your own eyes were you not made were you not head of the tribes of Israel and did not the Lord anoint you king over Israel Now the Lord sent you on a mission and said, go and utterly destroy their sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them utterly, fight against them until they are consumed. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you swab down on the spoil and do evil in the sight of the Lord and so said to Samuel but I obeyed the voice of the Lord and gone on the mission in which the Lord sent me and brought back Aga king of Amalek and I have utterly destroyed the Amalekites but the people took of the plunder the sheep and the oxen the best of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice to the Lord your God in Gilgal so Samuel said as the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obedience obeying the voice of the Lord 
Please underline verse 22. I'll read that part again. And Samuel said, As the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to eat than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he also has rejected you from being king. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now therefore please pardon my sin and return with me and I will worship the Lord. So Samuel said to Saul, I will not return to you for you have rejected the word of the Lord and the Lord has rejected you from being king over Israel. And as Samuel turned around to go away, so seized the edge of his robe and it tore and Samuel said to him the Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you from you today and as and has given it to a neighbor of yours who is better than you jump and go to verse 35 and Samuel went no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul. And the Lord regretted that he had made Saul king over Israel. Shall we go to another scripture? Exodus chapter 19 and verse 4. It says, you have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Underline that in your Bible. I'll read it again. You have seen how I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all all the people for all the earth is mine and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation these are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel may the Lord bless the reading of his word Yesterday, uh, we started this subject that we are going to uh, pursue for the rest of the week. We must learn to obey the Lord, our God. We must keep our obedience. We learned yesterday that when God speaks to us, he expects us to fully obey. 
when you partially obey the Lord, partial obedience equals to disobedience. And this is the main lesson in this portion of scripture in First Samuel chapter 15. God commanded Saul to go and utterly destroy the Amalekites. Destroy the young, the old, and everything that they had. The instruction was very clear. But Saul chose to go and destroy whatever he thought was not valuable, was not necessary. And they took the spoils and he took the king alive to show that he actually, the, the, the Amalekites were not a challenge to him that he could do what God had told them to do but he obeyed partially and that was disobedience that cost him what he had that cost him his kingship that cost him what God had given him he was rejected by God because he did not fully follow the Lord his God and this is the highest virtue of our faith, obedience. So he tried to explain to Saul, to Samuel, his reason for what he did. Trying to make sense before God does not make sense to God. When you begin to reason with God about what he has told you to do, your reasoning will never make sense to God. When God asks you to do something, he does not expect you to begin to be wise in his own eyes. Because what he thinks is different from the way we think. His ways are not our ways, his thoughts are not our thoughts. So when he commands you to do something, it is for your good. But you may not see the good at that time. I say when God commands you to do something, it is always for your good. But you may not see the good at that time. So, sometimes we feel like, I can only obey this part of scripture but not this part I can only do what I feel is convenient for me to do now in obedience to God and what is not convenient to me right now I will not do it it is disobedience partial obedience is disobedience God does not take half things. He will not have you partially. He either has the whole of you or he has nothing of you. You cannot be partially saved. You are either saved or not saved at all. You are either obeying God or walking in disobedience. There is nothing in the middle. Whatever is in the middle is a lie of the devil. Tell your neighbor 
it is total obedience or nothing so he begins to explain he said you know they looked at the the the, the sheep and the goat and the oxen those that were fat and looking nice and they said these ones we are going to take for sacrifice and everything that could not be good for you and your God we destroyed Samuel could not wait he said keep silent let me tell you what the Lord spoke to me last night he tells him when you were little in your own eyes this is where we stopped yesterday when you were little in your own eyes tell your neighbor neighbor that's where you are supposed to stay little in your own eyes let nothing happen in your life to cause you to be to begin to feel like you are something different from what God has made you he says when you are little in your own eyes didn't the Lord make you ruler over the tribes of Israel did he not anoint you king when when you were little in your own eyes it is called humility it is called what humility walking in humility will keep you going up God resists the proud but he gives grace to the humble he gives grace to the humble sometimes when you walk in humility humility looks like weakness but there is no greater strength than humility when you are humble you are strong I say when you are humble you are strong when you are little in your own eyes then you are strong if you stay that way there are no limits in life you know the world says the sky will be your limit there are no limits when you walk in humility there are no limits God will take you from one degree of glory to another degree of glory from strength to strength nothing will stop you from going up but it is the most let me say this I'm saying this with a lot of humility it is the most difficult thing to do as a Christian when God begins to bless you you become very visible people that never knew you know you places where you couldn't enter the doors just open by themselves maybe never, nobody was ever was even talking about you they begin to talk about you and the devil also he notices you and you become a target this is why I'm teaching you this because as the world is going down and the things that people have held on to so dearly 
begin to crumble God is going to do something that is out of the ordinary and that's why I read for you a Exodus chapter 19 God is reminding the children of Israel how he got them out of Egypt it was impossible in the natural for Israel to leave Egypt because Egypt at that time was the greatest kingdom on earth nobody challenged Pharaoh no army in the world was stronger than the armies of Pharaoh and God is saying to them when you were there I picked you up I carried you on my wings I bore you on eagles wings and brought you out of the most powerful hands of the king of Egypt and I did this because I have a mission for you you are not greater than any other nations but I chose you because you I have a mission for you he said to them if you will obey my voice and keep my covenant you shall be become to me what a special treasure you shall be to me a special treasure above all the nations He says for the earth is mine it belongs to me you shall become to me a special treasure because everything in the on the earth is mine so I am picking you and making you special among everything and above everyone else on earth And what will they become you shall become a kingdom of priests and a holy nation the same thing that Peter says concerning us that you are a chosen generation you are a royal priesthood you are God's own people and we are also called for a mission to declare the praises of God on earth everything that happens to you the glory must go back to God everything that happens to you the glory must go but I am emphasizing this because the mission that we have has to be fulfilled when God receives glory the world will look and they will say these people these people belong to God and they don't share what belongs to God with themselves they give it back to him in totality there is something that is going to happen and God is preparing the church for the rapture I have no doubt in my heart as I say these things to you I am preaching 
in the time of the end of the age. To see the second coming of the Lord. I will tell you what Jesus said to his disciples. Many of you seated here will not see death. You say, why are you saying what you are saying? I'm saying it because I have revelation. It, it, it is so evident that the coming of the Lord is not far beyond your age on earth. And we must learn to walk in humility. Amen. There is nothing, I will tell you this, there is nothing that God values. So, Samuel says to Saul, do you think God values burnt offerings and sacrifices more than he values obedience. You can never buy God. You can't bribe him. He does not value material things like human beings. God has exalted his word above his name. When you obey what he tells you, you become a treasure. It may not make sense. When God tells you to do something, do it. That is what carries your next miracle. It bears your next level. So lost his kingship and when he lost it he wants to repent he wants to do what he says I have sinned I have not obeyed the Lord a few Minutes ago he was saying I have fully obeyed the Lord And now When he is cornered He says I repent That was not genuine We can't hide Our hearts From God Maybe as we sit here, nobody can read your heart. But you can't hide what is in your heart. You can't hide it from God. God, God looks at the heart. He does not look at what is happening in the natural. He looks at your heart. And he looked and he saw this man has rejected my word. He has gone ahead 
and he has built a monument for himself. Huh? He has built a statue. He has exalted himself in the level that he feels that everybody should know. I, I, as I was meditating on this, you know, I, I spend a lot of time in prayer because I, I don't want to be a Bible storyteller. And the Spirit of God started to show me why when Jesus did great miracles, he sent the people away and he told them, don't tell anybody. How many people have seen that in the Bible? Huh? The people still went ahead and told, told other people. But Jesus told them, go and don't tell anybody. And the Spirit of God started to reveal to me why Jesus did this. When you begin to walk in the power of God, it introduces you It elevates you and puts you in a level where no one can ignore you. You do not need advertisement at that time. You need to hide yourself in God. They will still know you, but you stay small. They will still know you. They will still know what happened, but you stay small. And as you continue to stay small, more and more things are going to happen. This is the secret of those who maintain their kingship anointing and their priestly anointing. You carry both. You are a king and you are a priest. Because Revelations 1, 6. Can you read it for us from verse 4 through verse 6 of Revelation chapter 1? Show you what Jesus has made us. John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and is to come. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins mm -hmm. in his own blood and has made us kings. To him who did what? Who loved us. He loved us and washed us. And washed us. In his own blood. Now read the next part. When he did that, what did he do? And has made us kings and priests to he his God. He has made us kings and priests unto his God. When Jesus washed you with his own blood, he put on you the kingship anointing that is the anointing to maintain your dominion the anointing to rule over whatever place that god places you in the marketplace if you are in any profession when you use that anointing you go to the top Nobody can stop you. When you are in the business world and you use that kingship anointing, you rule over the, the business world where you are trading. Is anybody listening to me? 
and he has made us what he has made us kings and priests unto his God Amen. those two anointings walk together you lose one definitely you are going to lose the other one then the kingship anointing is for dominion the priestly anointing is for worship the moment you become a king you must become a worshiper and the moment you stay a worshiper you stay humble pride comes because you have left the place where God wants you to be that is the place of an intercessor when you begin to spend time with God everything that is in your heart that would rob you of your kingship will be revealed by the Holy Spirit and you will truly repent before God you will repent of disobedience you will repent of everything that the Holy Spirit reveals to you because that obedience is greater than sacrifice if you miss it you become rebellious you become what you rebel rebellion is like the sin of what witchcraft when you are rebellious there is nobody who can correct you when something happens it's a spirit I told you yesterday it's a spirit and that's the worst thing that can ever happen to anybody you don't want to be a believer who is a witch who is operating in the same spirit that the witches operate in why are they called witches because they bewitch their work is to negate the blessing God is a blesser witches are there to negate the blessing they work against God so when you you take that spirit you begin working against God when God when God corrects you you have a stiff neck you don't want to turn why because you want your way and not his way because his way is not always easy it is not always sweet but the end thereof there is peace and joy the end there is great victory you have already been made a king and a priest unto God so we rule on earth over principalities and powers and rulers and spiritual wickedness we rule over dominions we rule over over forces of darkness we rule over things that are going on in the world because the Lord says and the, the earth is mine I don't know whether you realize the last verse we read verse 35 it says until when so died when when Samuel left so after his garment was torn God Samuel told so 
your kingdom has been torn from you and that it has been given to one, your neighbor, who is better than you. And Samuel left and he never went again to see Saul until the day of his death. Can you imagine you being disconnected to your spiritual cover? There is no greater disaster than that. This is why the day that Saul died, he died with all his three sons. That disaster. The Bible there says, and, they, and Samuel mourned so when he died. Why? There was nothing. When God said, I have rejected you, he does not just reject you. He rejects you and all your generations. It is dangerous. So when Saul died, Jonathan died the same day and his brothers. So the kingdom was completely taken away from him and it will never forever go back in the family of Saul. That's why Abner and all the others who were fighting for a Benjamite to rule. That's why there was no way, there, there was no one because kings are born and there was no way they could anoint a king when the house of Saul did not have a son. It was disaster. May you not be ignorant. May you not lose connection with your spiritual covering. If you miss everything I say, please don't miss this one. Because you can lose your money. You can lose your business. You can lose everything. I am telling you the truth. You must never lose your connection with your spiritual authority. Because the moment you do that, you enter into the most dangerous arena. And the demons and the devils know you. They know that you are not covered at all. And so they will vex you. They will, everything that will rise up looking like it can become something, they kill it. And generations and generations behind you, they wonder why somebody tries to rise up. They go, they they are smart, they go, they get their degrees and they do everything but they can never amount to anything. Why? Because rejection is at work. Be wise. We have been made priests. Keep it. You are a priest. Stay in prayer. Stay in worship. Cleanse your hearts. You may, you may not, you may not walk a hundred percent holy, but every time something happens in your heart, the Holy Spirit will show you. Repent and walk with God and continue serving God and continue loving Jesus. Continue loving Jesus. We cannot afford to get to a place where God calls us stubborn and rebellious. You can never get to that point. Not under my preaching. Please, I beg you. Because rebellion is as witchcraft. And what? What? Stubbornness is like the sin of idolatry. You don't want to worship Jesus and worship idols. And you can be the idol yourself. That's what some Solomon had become. An idol himself. He did not give God glory for lifting him up. Say, I will never be stubborn. 
I will never be rebellious when I am corrected I will turn around when I am rebuked I will bend my knee and say I am sorry lift your hands and worship God take a minute in his presence if there was any seed of rebellion in you repent it right now if there was any any sign in your life of stubbornness say lord i will not be i am not going to be foolish because in the days of ignorance the lord overlooks but now he calls everyone to repent you can repent of every stubbornness maybe you have not been taking correction correctly repent right now and ask god before rejection comes god sends a word of warning and this is your word of warning before rejection god does not reject you without sending a word of warning oh salabayarabo siraba Oh mama maya zada bayaraba Have mercy on us Lord Have mercy on us Lord Lebo rambando raba bari araba shalaraba Labara babo shiri alalaraba Oh Jehovah You are a mighty God you are a great and mighty God. You are righteous in all your ways. Blessed be your name. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you because you have spoken to us and we have heard you let everyone under the anointing of my voice hearken to the voice of god i pray for those that are backslidden lord that they will come back into the kingdom i pray for those that are not born again that they will step into the kingdom i pray for those that have been walking in rebellion lord that they will turn away from it lord stubbornness and rebellion will not survive in our midst we thank you because you have heard us you may be here you say i need jesus to forgive me i am walking far away from him i'm backslidden i want to turn my life back to him or you are saying i'm not even born again i want jesus to change my story are you here lift your hand high above if you need that prayer i'll pray for you right now the greatest miracle of all miracles will happen to you if you need to turn back to god or to repent of your sin lift up your hand high above your head yes you will you will receive mercy and grace right now i want to pray that you will not lose what you have lift your hands lord i pray that none under the anointing of my voice will lose their obedience lord create a sensitivity in us a sensitivity to your voice that when you speak we hear and we answer Blessed be your name. I thank you. May we not pass a curse to the next generation. A rejection curse. May our children not struggle with things that they will never know what they are. Lord, I pray that our spiritual covering will always 
be there for us. Blessed be your name. In Jesus name. And all God's people shout a big amen. 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 This is a special offering for generations behind your name. That you will always obey God and you are going to leave that as a legacy. That your children, your children's children, they will never rebel and turn away from God. No matter what. Take an offering, take an envelope. We're going to give a special offering. Lift your offerings before the Lord. Raise your sacrifices. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Father, we are gathered in your presence to be corrected, to be rebuked, to be admonished. And Father, we take every word that you've released into our hearts today. We are raising this sacrifice, Lord, because of our generation. Mm. We know we can correct errors by raising a sacrifice. When you wanted to establish a people, you released an instruction. And Father, because we know there is an instruction given to us, carefully obeying it, Lord, we know that our lives and those of our lives ones we will never suffer. Yes, Jesus. We are standing, Lord, in this exalted altar to raise an altar and to raise a sacrifice to correct errors that were caused because of disobedience. Mm -hmm. Father, we are standing today pleading for mercy. Yes, Lord. We plead for your mercies today. What is this that we have that you didn't give to us? Everything we have today, you have given to us. Yes, Lord. We are what we are today because of what you have done for us. We are standing today. Our families are intact today. Because of what you have done for us. Mm. Oh God, we pray today that you will give us ears to hear your word. That we will heed to the instructions that you give to us. We repent of not following, not obeying fully, mm. not having, Lord, hearts that obey your voice in total this day father you have raised men to guide us that we have chosen to disobey father we pray today that you that you lord that you that you forgive us for the sake of the generations to come we choose to obey we choose to obey father we choose to obey we choose to obey. We choose to obey. Yes, Lord. We choose to obey. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, Shelanke Patiske my Gadua. We obey, oh God. We re choose to remain connected to the cover you have raised for us. We choose, Lord. In many ways, we have disobeyed, but we come back. We come back. We start all over again. This is the beginning of the year. We start all over again. We start all over again. Sicknesses have come into our families 
as a result of disobedience we come back Lord we come back Lord to your ways we come back we come back Jehovah we are becoming a king a kingdom of priests we are becoming Lord because of obeying and right now Lord we repent every sin the sins of disobedience Lord you say to us in your word the Lord disobedience is like is like a sin of witchcraft and father we pray today that men and women Lord and that the sound of our father will hearken to your voice that everybody Lord that is holding a sacrifice in their hands today this sick this sacrifice will possess the gates of our enemies yes every business lord represented here mm. every family every marriage oh god oh. lord by your grace mm. our enemies will bow yes. our enemies will bow yes. the enemies of our progress will bow yes. this afternoon by the grace of god mm. and father we know the battle is the Lord's the battle is not ours as we obey you father you take over your our battles father remember a woman here remember a man here that is crying in their hearts remember, remember father mercy oh God this is a house of refuge may we walk out of this place refreshed may we walk out of this house Lord lifted may lord may my father begin to repair begin to repair begin to repair the hearts begin to repair begin to repair oh god as we are raising this sacrifice before you lord may you begin to repair the walls may you begin to repair may you repair lord we honor you father and as we give to you lord as we sow our seeds as we give these special offerings lord we pray that our lives will never be the same again lord we give you praise in jesus name we pray amen 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 amen